The president, as you know, delivering a surprise trade bombshell, warning that the U.S. will impose a 5% tariff on all Mexican imports beginning June 10 until illegal immigration across the southern border is stopped. Cars and car parts among the biggest U.S. imports from that country. Shares of GM, Ford, Fiat, Chrysler all falling sharply in early trade. Joining us today first on CNBC, the assistant to the president, director of the White House Trade and Manufacturing Council, Peter Navarro. Peter, it's great to have you. Thanks for the time today. Good morning, Carl. How are you? Uh, great. Uh, I think investors might be curious as to the timing of all of this, and I wonder whether you think it came as a surprise to the market and was not at least well telegraphed. There should be no surprise that President Donald J. Trump is taking a firm stand uh, on border security. Uh, this particular measure, if you look at it from an investor's point of view and a corporate point of view, what we have in Mexico um, <laughs> is the export one of the high exports of illegal aliens. And it's a criminal enterprise. At any given day, there's 100,000 illegal immigrants transiting through the entire country of Mexico. They're transiting with the help of these transnational criminal organizations that are making billions of dollars off this trade. What we're asking the Mexican government to do is three things. One, most of this transit comes from Guatemala along the small 150 mile border. Numerous choke points would be very easy for the Mexicans to interdict there. Two, it would be very easy for the Mexicans to break up these transnational criminal organizations and this supply chain. And three, uh, the Mexicans have, have promised to help us with asylum. They can keep the asylum seekers on their side of the border. The numbers that we're facing, Carl, here are staggering. This is a crisis. Uh, the uh, statute being invoked here is the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. It requires two things. One, a national emergency. Clearly, we have that at the border. Two, it requires a threat to our economy, our foreign policy, or our national security. Clearly, yes. we have that as well. So if you just go down the checkpoints, uh, national security, drugs flying over here, gang members, crime. Uh, if you look at the economy, we see illegal aliens flood into um, our cities and, and deprive uh, people in those cities of good paying jobs. So that's that's the big picture. And I would I would suggest to investors to look at this calmly. Uh, look at what we're trying to do. This is actually a brilliant move by the president to get Mexico's attention, to get them to help us. So because yep. so far they've just been standing by, uh, and they they really have the power to help us. The two the two institutions that have the power to help us are the Mexican government, and the Congress. Congress has done nothing. The Mexican government uh, can, can really help us here. That's what we're asking them to do. Understood. If, if we agree that it's a legitimate use of the Powers Act, and that there is a crisis at the border, how does tariffs and the potential to push Mexico into recession help them fight the problem any better? So uh, the use of IEPA here is basically what we're do, doing is using a regulatory method to address this threat, and tariffs are one such use of the threat. What's what happening now is Mexico, by being a bystander in this criminal enterprise, is imposing enormous costs on the United States, on our welfare system, on our criminal justice system. I mean, we've got, uh, look, Carl. This week, this week, we had over a thousand families and unaccompanied children come over in a single group. They walked over from Juarez, Texas, uh, Juarez, Mexico, into El Paso, Texas as a single group. And we've got unprecedented numbers of children that are coming, uh, cases of uh, fraudulent uh, use of children to gain entry. And so these things are, are, are devastating to the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, to our Customs and Border Protection, which do a great job at the border. We're being overwhelmed. These are real costs on the American nation that Mexico could easily take care of if it chose to act. So this is a very modest approach. I want you investors, please understand. Understand. We're starting at 5%, doesn't kick in until June 10th. The Mexican government has plenty of time to begin to work with us on these um, measures. And this is an emergency that Donald Trump said he was going to fix during the campaign. Two and a half years in, this is going to be a, a, a smart way to do it. But, Peter, it also hurts the American consumer. Why would you punish Americans? We, Im we imported $350 billion worth of products from Mexico last year, everything from cars to fruit and vegetables to appliances. 
Why raise American consumers' prices on all of that stuff coming from Mexico? So this is one of the most misunderstood aspects of the Trump tariffs. Uh, China, for example, bears the burden of the tariffs in the form of lower exports, lower prices for their products, lower profits for their companies. The government of China has borne the burden of those tariffs in the form of lower tax revenues and a lower rate of growth. Uh, but so is Mexico, the American consumer. But no. I mean, importers the, pay for it. Uh, no, the government of China and Mexico will pay for it, and the producers in Mexico and China pay for this. Here's how it works. A tariff goes on that puts pressure on the Chinese or the Mexican producers to lower their prices, otherwise they can't sell. With China, for example, when we put the tariffs on China, we could buy the competing products from places like Vietnam or produce them here. That forced the Chinese to lower their prices. The same thing will happen um, with, with the Mexicans. So we bear a very small burden of these tariffs. Uh, please understand, if you just look at this from the macro level, we've had tariffs on dishwashers, solar panels, half of Chinese uh, exports to this country, steel and aluminum, and we see virtually no inflation in our data, yet we're growing at an unprecedented rate of growth. We hit over 3% uh, last, last quarter and last year. Uh, no inflation. So these people who say that somehow American consumers are going to pay for this, it's simply not true. These countries are, are paying Look at for the them. Look the stock market, Peter. Look at Constellation Brands. It's an American beer company. We, they import Mexican beer over the border, they're going to pay. Analysts this morning are saying their earnings are going to be marked down 5 to 10%. I mean, who do you think I, I, pays I think, if not the you, American companies that I, pass it on to the American consumers? I think, I think you're making my, my point in a way where the Mexican producers of that beer that's coming over the border will have to offer lower prices. They'll have the lower profits. Meanwhile, we'll get the tariff revenues. But, but let's. Uh, this is not a tariff war here with Mexico in, in any way, shape, or form. This is a measure to get Mexico to do what it should be doing in three different areas. Seal the Guatemalan border, break up the but transnational... But you're imposing tariffs at a time where you're trying to push a free trade agreement with Mexico. That, that's the definition of a tariff war. Now, let's talk about uh, the U United States Mexico Canada agreement. This is, uh, na na let's, uh, let's agree that NAFTA was one of the worst deals in American history. Let's also agree that the USMCA is one of the most sophisticated uh, trade deals that have, ev have ever been done. The president, with Ambassador Robert Lighthizer, have done a beautiful job getting that to Congress. It's Congress's move and Congress's responsibility to pass that bill under fast track. We are waiting for them to do their job. We're we're waiting for them to do their job on border security. We're waiting for them to do their job on infrastructure. We're waiting here trying to do our job, but the president's job is to defend our borders and defend this nation, and the crisis at the border uh, is untenable. We cannot continue to have 100,000 people transiting through Mexico at any given time, coming to this country and, and wreaking havoc uh, with, our, with our national well, most security of them, you know, and our economy. Mr. Navarro, to be fair, you keep talking about them wreaking havoc. As you pointed out, Many of the people, in fact, most recently are families with children and have been for a long time. Nobody is disputing whether it's a crisis, though I think many would dispute your characterizations of people I would, as criminals I would agree with you that this is a humanitarian. Like that. I would agree with it you is. that this is a humanitarian crisis as well. But let's face it here. These criminal organizations used over 4,000 children to fraudulently enter this country over the past year. Four, over 4,000 children were used as pawns in this transnational criminal organization game. So I think, you know, from an investor's point of view, because this is what your show is all about, I think the message here is simply that let's be patient, let's be calm, let's watch this. This is a, a, an imperative to solve this crisis. We are about a lot of things, including investors and, uh, and corporate executives, many of whom watch our, our network as well. And I wonder what they're thinking right now as they try to understand the landscape they're dealing with. You've got a trade war with China, which we haven't even talked about. Uh, you're trying to make decisions in terms of capital investment and everything else with the possibility that that is going to be ratcheted up. And now you're dealing with this unexpected tariff on imports from Mexico that could go as high as 25 percent. As a corporate executive trying to make sure. capital allocation decisions, doesn't this make your life a lot more difficult and uncertain? Uh, I think the uh, the 
model we have for steel and aluminum tariffs should inform corporate executive decision. What we saw with the steel and aluminum tariffs was a tremendous influx of investment into this country in steel and aluminum capacity. In other words, those jobs in those factories came home. We're seeing the same thing uh, in, in our, in our uh, negotiations with China. The, uh, it, Corporate executives are recognizing that the supply chain is better off than other places of the globe, or better yet, bring that here. That we've seen, we spent 20 years offshoring our supply chain around the world, hollowing out our factories, losing over 70,000 of our factories, over 5 million in manufacturing jobs. So corporate executives, I think one of the messages to them is it's, it's really a good thing to invest here in America. This, we have a, a stable economy. We have a sound dollar. And this is a good place to be. So that's the way so we look at it. Underlying, is that the underlying message you're trying to send through this tariff on Mexico? It's not just about immigration. It is also back to the agenda of trying to reshore jobs here in the United States? Not, not at all. This is, this is strictly about national security and threats to our economy from illegal immigration from a criminal enterprise. As I get back, if you want to really speak to corporate executives, I mean, think if you're a corporate executive running this criminal operation uh, in Mexico. You've got this entire supply chain that spans across the entire country of Mexico, deep into Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, coming across our border. And what you have is you got bus lines, you got all sorts of transportation, you got people who feed these people, and they make it easy for them. You, you, you give them scripts so that they can falsely claim asylum here and get in, and they know that they just walking across the border and going to overburden our system. I repeat to you, this week, over a thousand families and unaccompanied children walked over the border in a single group in a single day. That is not acceptable to this president. That should not be acceptable to anybody in this country. This is what we need to solve. This is what this is all about. And President uh, Trump is going to focus on this. You saw it through this. legislation here in this country. You saw it through negotiation with the Mexicans. We have a president who walked out of a meeting with Pelosi and Schumer because he says he won't do anything with them because he's being investigated. How can we ever expect anybody to get anything done here if nobody wants to even talk about trying to find legislation to deal with the problem? Yeah, it's a fair question, and I would say to you that the president is going to get this done uh, by invoking uh, the Emer uh, International Emergency Economic Powers Act and taking the appropriate measures. This will get everybody's attention in Mexico. It we has are going to work with them. They're, they're, they're our friends. They're our allies. But let's, let's face it. They've been standing by and letting this happen. There is a transnational criminal organization that thrives in the entire country of Mexico. They are a conveyor belt, a conveyor belt for illegal Peter. immigrants coming from Central America. That has to stop today. Peter, uh, speaking of getting people's attention, finally, as we wrap up and let you go, is there any number on the S&P, people have thrown out 2,600, that would get the White House's attention and, and inform a view that says the short-term pain is outweighing long-term potential? The important thing uh, for me every day I wake up and come in here is to create good jobs uh, for the people who work with their hands. The president wakes up every day thinking about how to grow this economy. It's astonishing that we could be having people talk about a recession when we have one of the strongest economies in the last 30 years. Historic low unemployment rate for everybody. Historic low for uh, African Americans, Hispanics, women, productivity rising, rising sure. wages, a wave of deregulation that's holding but prices I'm, down. I'm how, asking do you get about equities, how do you get 3.2 percent? Well, look, what is what is the stock market? It's a, it's, a, it's a leading indicator of the economy. This is a strong economy. It's going to keep growing strong. So I would say Peter, the investors for Q2 are tracking at 1 percent, barely. I mean, this is not a 3 percent economy anymore. That was the first quarter. Well, uh, the first quarter uh, was tracking at, at 2% and we hit 3.2%. And I would remind you, uh, when you think about tariffs, that uh, a full one point of that 3.2% growth rate was attributed to the tariffs on China and our reduction in the trade deficit. When we reduce our trade deficit with China, that means more factories and jobs on home soil. That means faster growth. And that means less money going over abroad that can come back here to buy America. That's a separate discussion. I want to emphasize here that this issue with Mexico and the tariffs is about national security and national emergency and a threat that this president is going to handle firmly and if Congress won't help them and Mexico won't help them we're going to move forward this way I believe uh, Mexico is going to respond very favorably and very quickly to this and so investors be patient 
Trust in the president. He's gotten you the best economy in the last 30 years. He's gotten you 3% growth. When nobody said you could get 3% growth, everybody was going to stick with two. This is a great president doing great things. We have to solve our border crisis.